one of the questions I get a lot as an educator is how do I set up my machine? So today we're going to talk about shield of metal arc welding, uh, specifically with the low hydrogen electrodes. And we'll just go over the basics. Uh, I'm going to show you how to dial in the correct amperage or a good place to start regardless of diameter and position that you're going to be running in with low hydrogen electrodes. So for example, we're going to start off with this 332 7018 rod. So we can do that by figuring out the decimal equivalent to the electrode. So for a 332nd electrode, we just take the 3, divide it by the 32, and we'll end up with 93, 0.093. So about a good place to start is 93 amps for the flat position. Now if I wanted to go into vertical, let's say, a good rule of thumb is to reduce that starting amperage in flat position by 10%. So if I take that 93 amps and I multiply it by 0 0.90, I end up with 84. So it's a, it's a good place to start is 84 amps for vertical. Same thing with overhead, but I only want to reduce overhead by about 5%. So same values, that 93 starting amps multiplied by 0.95, that's going to give me 88 amps. Okay, and that's, that's a good start for overhead. And we're going to demonstrate and show you guys, we're going to put these exact values of the Everlast over here, and we're going to produce these welds. We'll do a horizontal, vertical, and an overhead with the 332, as well as the 8th inch electrode. So same thing when we figure out the diameter or the uh, starting amperage for the eighth inch, <clears throat> start with the decimal equivalent, so that one eighth, so one divided by eight, it gives me 0.125. Get, just get rid of the decimal, I have 125 amps of starting amperage. Uh, good place to start for flat and horizontal. Same thing if I go into vertical, remember that 10% rule, I'm gonna reduce it by 10%. So that 125 times 10, you know, times 0.90, it's gonna give me 90%, so it's about 113 amps for the vertical position on an eighth inch electrode. Same thing with overhead, just reduce that by 5% of your original flat position amperage. 125 times 0.95 is gonna give me 122 amps. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys, we'll start off with the 332, flat, vertical, and overhead, or horizontal, vertical, and overhead, and then we're gonna do the eighth inch, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. So we're gonna start off with the 332 electrode in the horizontal, or 2F position. If we remember our calculations from a second ago, we discovered that I was about 93 amps. I've got my workpiece clamp plugged into the negative side, which is going to give me about 30% of my heat to my base plate. The electrode is plugged into the positive side, where the remaining 70% of that heat is going to go into my electrode. So right, right off the bat, I can tell you we got a smooth start there. Tying in good to the top and the bottom plate. This 93 amp seems about right. There's no sticking, I don't have excessive spatter. Overall, it's pretty smooth. I'd say 93 amps for a 332nd diameter electrode is the way to go. Keep a nice tight arc length in there. Once we get to the end, you want to make sure you know you take a second to pause and fill in any crater. All right, so we just completed that 332nd weld in the flat position. We've got a nice even bead profile, 50% coverage on the horizontal uh, joint, as well as the vertical joint, which is what we're looking for. Good tie-in, no undercut, no excessive spatter. So I say overall, it's a pretty decent weld, and 93 amps worked really well for us. So now we're going to test this theory again. We're going to go into the vertical position where we're going to reduce our amperage by 10%. So we started off with that 93. We're going to reduce that down. I got about 84. You know, you can round up a little bit. It's not going to hurt an amp or two. Uh, so we're going to run it over to 84 and hit this vertical and see what we come up with. Got a smooth arc start. Seems like it's digging in there pretty good. Letting in on the sides really well. Not blowing anything out. Rod's not sticking. 84 amps seems to be the ticket. Keeping that tight arc gap. A 
running really nice. I'm going to run a little tie in here. I ran a little short with that first rod. Make sure we get to the top. It's going to want to blow out. Pause a second. Fill that crater in. All right. So from the beginning, we had a good arc start. Uh, very limited undercut. Virtually no spatter. Uh, I'd say overall, it did pretty decent at that 93 amps. Uh, pretty impressed with this Everlast over here. Uh, and then once again, make sure that crater's filled out. We got a tie in right about in this area here. Uh, that turned out pretty well too. So good arc start overall. Uh, good tie in. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll swap it to the overhead settings. 88 amps and we'll run some overhead. So again, coming from the uh, your right to left this time because I ran it upside down. Good arc initiation, uh, good weld, not a lot of uh, undercut. Not, I mean, not any undercut. Very minimal spatter. I think I got two little BBs on here. Probably get rid of, take out, and uh, good crater fill. But rod wasn't sticking. I uh, wasn't didn't have any excessive heat, so I wasn't blowing any holes in here or having any any undercut. So uh, it looks like 88 is a decent starting amperage for overhead. So now we're gonna switch over, we're gonna try out the eighth inch rods. If you remember before, we listed that as about 125 amps. So we'll go ahead and dial in the Everlast and uh, let's see what we can do with it. So we got good arc initiation, no undercut, once again, good crater fill at the end. Um, the overall, I'd say it, it performed pretty well at 125 amps. All right guys, so uh, we went ahead and we made a goof. Left the machine sitting at 125 amps in flat position and went ahead and welded the uh, the weld joint up in the vertical position assuming we had the correct amperage dialed in and I ended up with some undercut on both the left and right hand side not too bad but more than I like to have on there I don't like to have any undercut at all also when we got to the top we went ahead and, and blew about 3 16th crater in the top there that's also something you're gonna want to avoid so had we dropped down to that 112 amp range that we discussed previously I don't believe that any of this would have happened so now what we're going to do is we're going to set the machine to the appropriate amperage that we discussed earlier and we're going to go ahead and rerun this coupon and show you guys the difference. Laying in there pretty smooth, about the way I like it. little side-to-side -side action. Hold the sides, give it time to cut, 
give it time to fill. At about a 10 degree travel angle. Tip of the electrode elevated about one inch above the end of the electrode. So you know you get a good angle. We just got done running it at the appropriate 112 amps. Uh, once again, no undercut, good arc initiation. Um, started over here, this is at the very bottom of the plate. This is the top. I uh, could have done a little bit better job of filling in that crater up at the top, keep that edge from blowing out. Uh, runoff tabs usually help if you're in that situation. Uh, but we're just doing a little bit of practice and some demonstrations here. But other than that, no, uh, no well BBs, so no buckshot on here. Everything uh, overall looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna run our overhead on uh, eighth inch diameter, 7018, with the 122 amps we discussed previously. So let's go ahead and get that started. Start it off really well. Seems to be getting good penetration. I can see how it's digging in there. Don't have a whole lot of sag, keeping that tight arc gap. Not sticking, so that's always a good sign. Yeah, I think this 122 amps is about the way to go. Crater in here at the end. Slight little pause. All right. So overall, we got a pretty good bead appearance on here. Melted in nicely to both sides of the material. I got one spot over here where I got a bit of lack of fusion, and uh, that's I think that's more my fault than it is the ampers that when I was selected. Uh, it's all in technique. But overall, good weld. Nice bead appearance. I'd say that 122 amps is a pretty good starting average for your amperage. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, make every weld better than your last. I also got to say I'm pretty impressed with these furred brushes. Keep you looking good out there on the job site.